Hey, and welcome to my channel about living in and moving to Denver, Colorado. Today's a really fun one because I've been getting a lot of requests of what am I supposed to do if I visit Denver? What are some go-to attractions to see? So we're gonna be covering the top things to do if you're visiting or if you already live here. Let's get into it. Katie Martino, also known as the Real Estate Gal. If this is your first time tuning into my channel, thanks for watching. Love for you to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you get notified every time I release a video. And as mentioned, I'm a licensed real estate agent in this state. So if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal, would love to help you. So please reach out whichever method is best for you. Call, text, or email. I also love providing insight of things to do in the Denver area. So if you're visiting here, maybe you have no intention of moving, totally okay. We're gonna cover some of the top things to do that you have to see because it is unique to Denver. Now, if you are moving here, I also cover different neighborhoods to check out, things to do with your family, cities and suburbs that surround the Denver area. And I am a foodie, even though I despise that word, I love trying new restaurants, eclectic menu palettes, and again, things that you can't find in other cities or other areas. So if you need any type of advice of places to check out, places to move, things to do while you're here, please reach out to me or comment below because I just wanna be a resource for you. So let's get into this video about things to do if you are visiting the Denver metro area so that you can have the best experience. order of things that I am recommending are kind of near each other in different pockets. I did try to keep everything to Denver Metro versus doing a full on video of things to do in the mountains because a lot of people visit and tour during the summer or even winter months because of what you can find in the mountains. Hiking, backpacking, camping, trail riding, the list goes on and on. So I tried to focus mostly on what you can do in the Denver area. So if you fly into Denver International Airport, which is our major airport and you either take the light rail station to downtown denver or if you get an uber a lyft or maybe you're renting a car you're gonna see blucifer which is this amazing statue it is super tall and it is known because it actually killed its creator so the person that was creating this huge sculpture it's a blue stallion and then it has these red laser eyes actually fell on the person that was sculpting it and unfortunately it killed him. So that part is a little bit tragic, but it is one of the icons that you'll see when you fly in to Denver International Airport. So there's also all of these different white peaks that are iconic to DIA and those indicate the 54 14ers. I just had to Google how many 14ers we had in Colorado and it's coming up with 58 on Google and the number of peaks that are at DIA, I believe is like 52 to 54 regardless there are these really cool white peaks they almost look like tents and they indicate the amount of 14ers that we have in Colorado a 14er is a mountain that is over 14,000 feet of elevation at the top so a lot of people have that on their bucket list to do all of the 14ers in Colorado Wow, that's a lot of hiking to do. Not all hikes in Colorado are 14,000 feet high. There is a definite difference in terms of breathing and what your body actually will acclimate to in a short amount of time. So be very cautious about that. Do research before you go on hikes like that if you are visiting the area. If you already live here, it's gonna be a little bit easier because Denver is a mile high city, 5,280 feet above sea level. Our air is a little bit thinner. It is a little trickier to breathe here. It does take your body a little bit of time to acclimate. So check out some of my other videos for tips. If you are visiting in Denver or if you're moving here, you gotta stay hydrated. You have to apply sunscreen like crazy. We're a mile high, closer to the sun. So you burn a lot faster. All right, so moving on. So you fly into Denver International Airport. Now, if you take the light rail, there is a super cool functioning train station called Union Station. I always recommend people to go here because 
because it is super duper iconic. It is an old train station that they refurbished. Now has the Crawford Hotel inside. It is three stories with super duper high ceilings, some original, or it seems like they are original chandeliers. There are a ton of bars and restaurants that are incorporated into Union Station, such as Snooze Eatery. There's the Terminal Bar that has a pretty good selection of craft cocktails. There are sometimes pop-up bars that happen in the floor below. So they're not open all year round. They did have a Santa pop-up, which was super cool. It's called Miracle Bar. And there were nutcrackers everywhere, as well as ornaments hanging from the ceiling. And then all of the drinks were holiday inspired, which was super cool. So you can play shuffleboard in the common area. You can take the Amtrak train to other destinations. There is a train that goes up to Winter Park that's in the mountains. So there's actually a train station there as well as the light rail station that goes a ton of different places. So I feel like Union Station is a, is a really cool date night spot as well. So you can maybe grab a cocktail, grab a bite to eat, such as a place like Stoic and Genuine has oysters and really fresh fish, or there's Mercantile, which is a new American style restaurant, almost tapas style. And then there's Cooper's Lounge, which is upstairs. It's kind of like a speakeasy because you wouldn't necessarily know it's there unless you already know that it's there. That kind of overlooks the common area, but you you wouldn't see it, like see people looking over the edge necessarily. And they have small bites and craft cocktails as well. And if you are staying at Union Station or at a nearby hotel, there's a ton of different bars and restaurants that go from business casual to super fancy schmancy to grab and go. One of the places to stop is Milk Market, which is a block. It's also known as Dairy Block. Again, a lot of different types of food choices to choose from. They have these really cool milk jug market lights that are going across the entire alleyway. There's a couple bars and breweries as well as a speakeasy that's also incorporated in there. So even if you're just walking by, that's a really cool street just to walk down. And then you have McGregor Square, again, another collective eatery area. They have movies in the park that show once a week on their huge screen. That is where I watched the Avalanche win the Stanley Cup. And they also air the Nuggets that just won our championship. And then they also have the Denver Derby there. So there are events that happen as well as just a cool spot to hang out, open air and enjoy the downtown Denver lifestyle. And then you get to Coors Stadium. So I absolutely love Rockies games. I am not huge on baseball. I'm not a huge baseball nerd, but just being amongst so many people that are in Colorado and just happy to be outside, the Rocky Stadium is a really cool spot to check out. Tickets are relatively inexpensive and you don't necessarily have to buy a baseball ticket to sit in the stadium. You can also go to the rooftop that's within the stadium. But what I normally do is I buy the cheapest ticket possible, also known as rock pile, which are the bleacher seats at the very back part of the stadium. Stadium. So I'll buy the cheapest ticket and then I'll just go straight to the rooftop. It's open to anyone. And the cool thing about it is if you get a spot on the railing, you can just hang out, watch baseball, and then start to network and socialize or move around as much as your heart desires. So you don't have a designated seat in the rooftop area. So if you buy a seat, of course, then you have a seat, but there is a couple sections that if the game isn't sold out or near capacity that you can go and sit down if you do need a break. There are also cabanas, tons of different styles of food. There's a smash burgers. There's also famous Dave's that has a booth along the way. And we are in 2023. They do have for the first two hours before first pitch, they have, I believe it's all beers is $3 or at least one of the beers is three bucks. So you're drinking cheaper inside the stadium than you would be if you went to a restaurant outside the stadium. But even if you don't like baseball, if you just want to go hang out for a bit, the Rocky Stadium has one of the best views, in my opinion, of the sunset. So the sun sets over the mountains and the way that the rooftop works, as well as really almost any seat in the Rocky Stadium, is that you get to watch the sunset set behind the mountains if you go to a night game. So in my opinion, totally worth whatever the ticket price is. Speaking 
speaking of the Coors Stadium, one thing that you have to do while you're here is go to a Coors Brewery tour. So this is located in Golden, Colorado. So it's about a 20 minute drive. I'm always hesitant giving time estimates for driving because of course it does depend on what time of the day you are driving, but it is relatively close to the Coors Stadium. There is the Coors Brewery plant in Golden. And so you get to tour the Coors Brewery and then of course enjoy some really cool Coors beer at the end of the tour. Now Golden, Colorado is a super cool place to check out. It was a small mining town at one point and you just kind of get that hometown type of feel while you're there. They have a really nice downtown with local mom and pop shops, burrito joints, other small microbreweries to check out and you are right next to the mountain. So very cool spot. If you're able to stay in Golden, Colorado and get a hotel, if you don't wanna be downtown in the hustle and bustle, the second place that I would recommend is Golden. So I had somebody reach out to me and they said, hey, we're going to a concert in Red Rocks, which that is the next place to check out. But regardless, they're going to a concert at Red Rocks and then they're going up to Boulder for a couple days. Golden is right in the center of both of those locations. So I'd highly recommend Golden. You're not gonna feel as overwhelmed as if you were to stay downtown where parking can be a little bit of a nightmare. There can be a lot of things going on. If there's a concert happening downtown or Rockies game, it can get super duper busy. So Golden is a little bit removed and of course you can still visit downtown, but that would be a really great place to check out, especially if you're going to the mountains the next day. So leading back into the Red Rocks Amphitheater, even if you're not going for a show, you got to check it out. They are open. I believe it's pretty much all the time, but people People go there just to do the workouts. So they don't close off the inside of the amphitheater just because there isn't a concert going. So a lot of people will do the stairs or they'll do yoga on the rocks. Some are instructor led type workout classes and some are just, you know, create it yourself in one of the coolest amphitheaters that you can find. There's a gorgeous rock formation that Red Rocks is. And so if you're driving by, you can actually see it from the highway. It is absolutely worth a stop. And of course the sound and the concerts there are amazing. The acoustics carry beautifully. And again, people are just happy to be outside and amongst the mountains. Now, like I said, I am trying to keep this video to kind of the Denver Metro area, but if you are going to Rocky Mountain National Park or to the mountains, I'd recommend Estes Park. Estes Park just has a really cool downtown. It's right next to the mountains. You are amongst the trees and just nature. And one really cool thing about the downtown area is that there are elk that just roam the streets. I thought that they were bronze statues. And so I'm just like, dur, dur, dur. and then all of a sudden some of them are moving and it's just like, wow, these creatures are super majestic. So Estes Park is definitely a place to go. So if you're going, if you're, let's say you're staying in Golden and you're going up to Boulder, you could essentially just keep going to Estes Park to visit the mountains, hit Rocky Mountain National Park. If you're going hiking, camping, anything outdoors, Estes Park is a great place to check out. So one of them is the Denver Nature and Science Museum. If you have been outside in Colorado, let's say you're in the summer and you're just burnt and just need a place to go inside that's cool because it can get pretty hot in the middle of the summer in Colorado, I would recommend the museum because it has so many different exhibits. There are, I believe, three floors. I love that they have a rotating exhibit. Currently, it is bugs. I haven't checked it out, so I can't really talk to anything other than that's what the featured exhibit is. But they've also had mummies. They've had the Dead Sea Scrolls. They have had the Rosetta Stone, the Art of the Brick. That one was cool. It's all Legos. And you'd think like, okay, Legos, what can you really do? No, they get really intricate and some really awesome some designs. Then there are some staples that are not rotating exhibits, such as the dinosaur area, and you get to see the Triceratops that was discovered by a 13 year old. Like how cool would that be? They also have a huge North American exhibit. They'll have gems. They have classes for little kids as well as adults. And then they also have event space. So sometimes they're running different types of events. There's an event that I've gone to and it's, I believe it's called the Museum After Dark. And so they shut down the museum, which isn't open past, you know, a certain, you know, bedtime. And then they'll put 
different bars around. People get all dressed up in gowns and there's little food bites. And I believe it was to benefit a nonprofit. That was super cool. And I know that there's been weddings there as well. And they just put a ton of money into revamping the IMAX theater. So if there is a movie being shown there, it's one of those screens that just kind of goes all the way up and you just kind of feel like you are in the middle of it and immersed. So really cool place to check out. Another one that is pretty much right next door is the Denver Botanic Gardens. That one is on York Street. They also do random events throughout the summer as well as winter. They have a summer concert series. They do Blossoms of Lights, which is near the holiday time frame, like kind of Christmas Thanksgiving, where you go after dark, you can buy hot chocolate, hot cider, and everything is essentially lit up. But since we're in the summer months currently, really cool place to check out some really exotic flowers and plants. Some people actually just have a membership and they go in and have a picnic or just go to relax. There's all sorts of nooks and crannies to go to. They also have a ton of events. So I used to be an event planner for a catering company and there are, I believe about seven places that are inside the Denver Botanic Gardens on York Street where you can have a reception or a wedding. And so it's kind of cool to see brides and grooms just walk around the gardens. And then speaking of gardens, there are two others that you could check out depending on where you're staying, where you're living, where you're moving to. There's also the Denver Botanic Gardens in Chatfield. That one in the fall has a corn maze as well as a pumpkin patch. That one I feel like is a little bit more spread out. And then if you're down that way, I would hit Chatfield Reservoir, which has a dog park. There's a couple different lakes. There is camping and hiking. That one is hundreds of acres. So if you're here for a while, I'd recommend going and stopping there. I actually have plans in the next week to go paddle boarding at Chatfield Reservoir. You can also rent paddle boards too. And then the third botanic gardens is the Hudson Gardens, which now that I say that, I don't know if that is a botanic gardens, but really cool spot to check out. I was just there for Halloween this last October. They have a Halloween walk around that is called Magic of the Jack-O-Lanterns. And they have hundreds, if not thousands of pumpkins that are in different shapes and sizes and in different formations. One that stuck out to me was like a Harley Davidson motorcycle themed kind of area or pocket. So I believe they had about 10 different motorcycles that were all made out of out of pumpkins that glowed. And then there is a lake that's in Hudson Gardens area. So what was so cool is that it the weather just made it foggy above the lake. So I believe that means that it's warmer air and cooler water, something like that. But it totally went with the theme of Halloween of being kind of eerie and foggy. They didn't have a fog machine. So that was super cool. They also had a Harry Potter section and then they also made a giant ship that was Pirates of the Caribbean theme. Themed. Super duper cool. And then that garden area is located in Littleton. There are so many events that I want to talk about. And I actually send out a weekly newsletter that has things that are going on around the Denver metro area. So if you want to be part of my newsletter, please send me a direct message with my contact information. All I need is your email. I'd love your first and last name too, so I know who I'm addressing it to. But I send that out every Wednesday. And there's a little bit of market insight as well as a featured home and tips and tricks of being a homeowner in the state of Colorado, which can be a little bit different from wherever you're coming from. But I just love the variety variety of everything that we have here in Colorado. So as mentioned, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified every time I create a video about the Colorado and Denver metro area. And then as mentioned as well, I am a licensed real estate agent in this state. So if you need help with buying, selling, or anything in between, I'm your gal and would be honored to earn your business. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.